So this is the picture. And what they do, they just elongate the, the face and, you know, make the ear bigger and the nose, everything. They just kind of bring it all down. And, yeah, they put them in, put them in a shirt and everything. <laughs> Yeah, it is a real photo. It's just really impressive to me. I mm -hmm. don't know who or how they, they learned those techniques, but um, yeah. it's pretty incredible. It is. Yeah. And then, did I do it? Okay. <clears throat> this is what he looked like. This was his fourth birthday taken October 30th, we lost him the following February. And so this is basically what he looked like. And so, you know, there they are together. Yeah. I just thought, man, this is a good looking guy. <laughs> is that... I mean, I know like, everyone thinks this <clears throat> I know, I know. I think, well, oh my gosh. So after I put the age progression picture on Facebook, yeah. a member, he, I don't know if he, he, I don't know if he was a sergeant or what he was with the Atchison County Sheriff's Department. And guess what his name was? Jeremy Peak. Uh -huh. Jeremy. And I think he was a sergeant. Anyway, he said, um, I need you to contact me. I'm like, oh my gosh, you know, anytime anybody like yeah, that, like, it, it just, oh my gosh, they found something, you know. And he contacted me and he goes, how come the case is closed here at Atchison County? I said, you have to ask the sheriff at that time. I don't know why they closed it. They closed it because that's what he thought. He, he, bet, he went by what the air scent dog did, you know. And there was another, the, the first night, they brought a KCI, KC, oops, oh my lord. <laughs> oh gosh. Here's his little, little Raggedy Andy. Did, you said you wanted to see a. Yeah, if you have any mementos, but um, I, can, I can film, film that here in a second. Okay. But, um, we're talking about like if, if he were to be found. I mean, you, you had gotten a call from someone at Jeremy. Oh yes, um, Jeremy Peak, and he said, why? was his case closed yeah. and I said I don't know KBI thank God they kept it open but Atchison County Sheriff's Department closed it on what the air scent dog found yeah. and Kansas City canine I found out later they wouldn't talk to me to begin with because I'm out here pregnant and everybody's scared of me so nobody would tell me anything yeah. so I had a hard time trying to put some of the pieces together but um, I, I did but anyway um, he, and I said, well, I don't know other than that. And I said, um, Sheriff Hanson. And he says, he says, there's not even a record. I said, I know. When 13, well, no, it was 18 years after it happened, I went and tried to find the records. And they were gone. And they said that they got rid of them after 10 years. He said, that's not true. He said, we've got some in that, at that, that year that they've kept. There's somebody has taken that record from the Sheriff's Department. Mm -hmm. Anyway, we don't know who. But um, th uh, we'd like to find it. He says, I'm reopening the case. I said, amen, thank you, thank you, thank you. Well, because I put the age progression picture on Facebook, this guy called up, and his name was Jeremy P. Coots. And this, of course, is Jeremy Ray Coots. And he told me he was my son. And he lived in Reno, Nevada. And um, I said, how's your hearing? And he goes, oh, I get earaches every once in a while. I said, my son was deaf. You know, I knew by the, talking to him, it couldn't be him. Yeah. And but but I knew that sometime in Jeremy's life, they would fix something that he would be able to hear. And so of course, what the cochlear? Mm -hmm. what you, yeah. So that was it. Would My be. Used that too. Oh yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. And he has cochlear, so. mm, they are the perfect person, aren't they? Yeah. yeah. He's such a good. He's yeah. So good. He's 18 now. And mm -hmm. He's graduated high school. Mm -hmm. and such a good kid. Oh yeah. Gosh. Yeah. So anyway, um, he reopened it. Yeah. 
And then this guy called up from Reno, trying to tell me he was was my son, and and he said, um, I I don't want any money or anything. I said, Well, that's good. You're not going to get it. And he said, um, He said, I said, I just want to send you my DNA. I said, No, you cannot send me your DNA. If you want to send that, send it to KVI or Atchison County Sheriff's Department. Leave me completely out of this. And so I called up the Sheriff's Department. Just just you know, ha ha, this is funny. And he said, oh, we gotta go check that out. I said, are you kidding me? Yeah. I said, the guy is a little bit, you know, not right. And uh, he said, no, we have to check out every single so thing. They? Yeah, huh. yeah, they sent a highway patrolman to get his DNA. And then I had to give my DA, DNA again. And they also take my daughter Amanda's. So they go to her work to get her DNA, and everybody, in, she works um, in a, uh, at a um, factory. So, you know, bring it, you know, when they come in, and it was like embarrassing. Oh my. You're okay. I turned you off, okay. Um, so, anyway, so now they're both open again, and I feel a lot better. But I, I've just about lost hope, I really have. You know, a mother's love is pretty strong. And we'll cling on to anything, anything. So that's the part that wants him to be alive. And, you know, you think about that like, you know, he's a man now and he just doesn't know how to find us. You know, somebody could have taken him and could have told him whatever story. Oh, yeah. And, you know, and I like to think of that instead of him being in the Missouri River. That's a hard one. It's a real hard one. Questions that I want to ask. Mm -hmm. Is there anything else that you think is important or that you want to mention? I don't know. I can't mention my book, um, but I did write. I did write that book uh, because I. When did you write it? Um, I started. See, this is another important thing. Rick would, and so I went to counseling, and that December, then she said. You're done. I said, no, no, I'm not done yet. No, 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 no. And she goes, yes, you are, Melody. You're going to have to do the rest of it by yourself. I said, I'm not ready. And she says, yep, you are ready. I'm like, oh, my gosh. So Rick wouldn't let me talk to him. I couldn't cry in front of him. So I talked to my aunt late at night, every night from like 11 until 2. And she pulled me through it. But I couldn't talk to her 24 hours a day. So I got hurting so bad. Well, and I put all of his toys and clothes in the basement, and I would go down there and hold the stuff, and uh, they made me get rid of all that stuff. So I want to tell people. Right oh yeah, I kept a few things that they didn't know about. <laughs> and what yeah. is this that you have? This is a rag Raggedy Andy. <laughs> you know. Did you play with it a lot? <laughs> I guess he did. <laughs> Yeah, pulled the pulled the eyes out and everything. But yeah, there's a, I have a couple other things that I don't don't share with anybody, but I'll share him with you. But there's I, I kept a few things. What does that mean to you to have to still have that? It's I can touch him through this. And I can hold it up here. That's what it means to me. So anyway, I, got, I had to get rid of all the stuff, and I had to have an outlet. And so I just started writing. And I wrote, and I wrote, and I wrote. And after about two years, I thought, hmm, this ain't bad. Maybe I should do something with this for other people like me that are having trouble. And I thought, oh, I, I don't write well. So I went to St. Benedictine College to get English classes. Mm -hmm. And guess what her name was? Yeah. Sister Jeremy. Oh, wow. Dan <laughs> all these signs, you I know. know. I know, so I knew I was doing the right thing. Yeah. And um, so um, she helped me a lot. 
And then that was about the time where electric typewriters were cheap enough you could actually get one because they're like um, one or two hundred dollars at that time. Mm -hmm. So I, that's what I got. I got a typewriter. And oh my gosh, I was really happy then. Any time that I felt anything, oh, I just typed and typed and typed and typed and typed. And I saved it. And every time I hurt so bad, I can't stand it, I'll write something. Mm -hmm. And I saved it. 1995, fast forward, I got a computer in the house. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And so I said, where is that box? See, I had a box and I told the kids, you do not get into this box. This is sacred. Do not touch anything in this box. And so it was all there. And I put it on the computer. And then I would, um, every time I get a new computer, I take it out, put it on the new computer. And then I finally found someone that would help me edit it. And you never guess who that was. I taught, I called, found Tom Kazo. He was the guy that owned the Air Scent Dog. And I wanted to call him and say, hey, I made it. I got three other kids, I've got a husband, I got a life. Yeah. I'm, I'm doing it, I'm, I'm walking the walk. And um, he said, she said, the woman said, he died last May. And I told her I was trying to get this book published. And um, that was in 08, I think, when I talked to her. Yeah. 2012, she contacts me back and she goes, I'm a magazine editor and I'll help you. Really? Mm -hmm. And I never have met her. She lives in Florida. And so we did it over the phone and, you know, with texts and everything. And so we did an ebook. And I wanted more, I wanted a paperback. So I went to, um, the, is to Google and search, and I found createspace.com, which is great because it's a POD, uh, print on demand. And I wanted to write this book because one, Jeremy was four years old, and he doesn't have anything to show what his life was. And I want his life to mean something. And I know, as, he's such a sweet little boy, I can't tell you how wonderful he is. People would just walk across the street just to meet him. It was really strange. Yeah. When I was when I didn't have any other kids, I thought that's just what people did. <laughs> but then when they had the other kids, I'm like, right. He was so great. There was something about him, and and he he couldn't talk. He would just say gibberish, <laughs> and people would say, "What did he say?" I'm like, "I don't know," yeah. and then they leave me alone. And um, when he had this hearing aid, oh my gosh. They would jab each other and point, and I'm like, seriously, guys, do you do that when you see a kid with uh, glasses on, you know? And I had him, I had him pre-enrolled for the School of the Death in Olathe, and we were so excited because yes, because he was going to go in August, and this was this happened in February, and we were going to get more communication. He knew uh, 15 words, and they said that was amazing, and they said two years in Olathe, and then he could probably mainstream back into the regular classes. Yeah. So anyway, that wasn't meant to be, but the book, I thought if it would help one person, it, it, it would be worth it to do it. And Did his life would mean something. Oh, yeah. yeah so they it still did. reach out. They still reach out. That's incredible. Mm -hmm. Yeah. I mean, you're doing great things with, mm -hmm. I mean, a tragedy. Mm -hmm. And I think that's so important. Yeah. It is, and oh yeah, I've had I've had multiple people mm -hmm. contact me, and the thing I like about it, ah, sorry, I keep forgetting I have that. We're getting close to time, yep. so you know, yep. so I don't want to get you late. Oh, I can be late. <laughs> I just have to be there by nine. Got it. Did I? Did I lose it? In the back, I have some things that are. History. Okay, so another reason I, I wrote this was because people in the Atchison area, you can't believe the rumors. We took him to Texas. People are just ridiculous. And that we hated him and oh, I don't know, all kinds of stuff. It was just terrible. But here, What is the book I'll document, just the whole experience? Um, it starts out with the search, 
And the first few chapters are about the search. Mm -hmm. And then the rest of it is what happened the next year and a half, what I had to deal with. Yeah. And they feel a peace that I have learned how to get. I had to have that to stay sane. Mm -hmm. You know, you have to deep, get, go deep inside you. And um, God helped a lot. Yeah, he, he pulls me through. So I'm glad I have my religion. But see, I was really mad at him. That's what I was mad at was God. How dare he give me a son that couldn't even hear a bird sing and take him at age four in such a way I don't even have a body to mourn. What kind of God does that? You know, and when you, and when you do lose somebody, you always blame somebody. People say, well, what do you think about the babysitter? Did you, do you hate her? I'm like, she has to live with something I can't even imagine. I think she's, and if I, if I would hate her, then I'd be all black and gooey inside, you know? I don't want to live like that. I can't just, she can just deal with it. She died seven years later in a one car wreck, mm -hmm. Christmas Eve night. Oh my gosh. Yeah. But there's some cool things in here, like this is this, uh, where, where he was at. And um, it's a mile south of Atchison and it's called Potato Hill. Okay, yeah, I'm gonna go there to give okay. you some generic mm -hmm. footage. And this is the other one. I, we bought this, we bought this teddy bear here for Amanda. And I told Jeremy, now this is for the baby, so we're just gonna put it up here. <laughs> yeah, I have it upstairs. I don't, I don't let anybody touch it. <laughs> and then this is the civil service engineer. There were so many people, so many departments in Atchison that were working on it. And then this is the um, where they found it. The um, oh, it's the it's the map of the area that he was in. So I think that's, that's about everything on that. But, so I, so I, as the, as the um, album I bought for, to put Jeremy's pictures in, okay? okay? And it, you know, it's kind of beat up and everything, all the pictures in there. <laughs> My aunt, the one that helped me so much, bought this for me to put the newspapers in. Look oh, at this, yeah, look at this, identical. And there's just so many coincidences and stuff like that. But I, but I kept all of the, and she told me, she said, you won't be able to do this now, but there'll be a time that you'll want to do this. And she was right. And so, you know, there's just all kinds of, all the way, you know. Okay. 